everyone and welcome to another episode of Thinker Thema. I'm Amy. I'm all about the mechanics in a game. It's the way that I understand and enjoy games. And this is my better half. This is my partner in life. This Hardly is Maggie the, the Thema. <laughs> Definitely the better half. Everyone, 100% of people agree <laughs> that you are the better half. Um, and she is all about the theme, the story and the way that you can immerse yourself in a game. And together we review games from these two different perspectives. And today we are reviewing this huge game, Rococo, the Deluxe Edition. So this game um, was an older game that actually went out of print. And now Eagle Griffin Games, the publisher, have brought it back in this new deluxified kind of edition. The game is by Matthias Kramer, who is the designer of Glenmore 2, um, you know, in terms of one of the more mm -hmm. uh, modern games. Um, Lewis and Stefan Miles together, they did um, Ultra Plano, so that's another game that people might know. So definitely a powerhouse team of designers. The artwork, on top of all that, the artwork is done by Ian O'Toole, mm -hmm. who everybody knows who Ian O'Toole is, has made this beautiful world mm. kind of come to life. And this is a huge box. It is not cheap. Um, and it weighs a ton. Um, I don't need to go to the gym after kind of lifting this. Right now, there's nothing in it. So, you know, this yeah. is probably about my fitness level, actually. <laughs> right now. Right Post now. Post lockdown. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. But yeah. So, so let's... let's talk about the, the theme or what we're trying to do in Rococo. So in Rococo, it is France and Louis XV is getting ready to launch the final ball of the season. This is a big deal. We're going to the ball. We are going to the ball, or hopefully we're going to the ball. Um, we want to make sure that our presence is known at the ball. We have tailoring uh, houses, so like we create uh, amazing frocks and gowns. Mm -hmm. And so what we want to make sure that we do is we want to make sure that our gowns are beautifully featured um, throughout the ball. So when people ask, who are you wearing? Who are you wearing? And then, you know, that all comes back to us. That and also um, having the prestige and the reputation of uh, having our presence in other ways so we can be sponsoring things like you know the musicians or sponsoring saving the spot for the best view of the fireworks so yeah just making sure that you know we know that anyone like everyone who's anyone is going to be there and we want to make sure that wherever they are they know that you know we paid played a part in that that's a really fun thing yeah it actually, is like listening to you describe it even like Everyone knows that I very much focus on the mechanics, but the mechanics are not super complicated here. It's really, for me, it is like a lot about the theme, the mm. game, and kind of what brings it together and what creates that fun interaction around the table. Yeah. But let me just explain briefly how you play the game or what the game's about. Actually, it's not going to be how to play the game. There are many other people that do better videos um, of how to play. But just to give you a broad overview, you are trying to create these dresses along the bottom of the board. They are randomly drawn out of a bag and the, this marketplace is kind of filled. And these are the dresses that you want to try and put together or create. And the way that you do that is you collect these uh, resort, these silks, silks and also lace and these bobbins of thread totally cute resources so great really yeah, so fun tactile. to just yeah, yeah trade with and play yeah. with um and once you've got the required resources to build a dress or put together a dress you can take that and you can do one of two things you can either sell that dress so once you've created it you can sell the dress um, and it goes off the board and you get the dollar amount that it's worth and um, income is quite hard to come by in mm. this game so that's important or you flip it over and you place it in one of these different ballrooms where they're ballrooms, aren't they? Thematically. Oh, they're halls. Yeah, sorry, halls. I always get the theme wrong, always. Mm -hmm. um, so in one of the halls, you will place that um, gown down and you will put your marker on it to say, hey, this is my branded dress. Um, and you will get those victory points at the end of the game. But most importantly, this is an area control game. And so other people are going to be filling up these halls with their dresses. And at the end of the game, you're going to get victory points depending on whether you are first or second in terms of that area control on the board. I should say that 
This side of the board that we're showing is for one to three players, mm -hmm. and then you can turn it over for a four or five player game. And these areas get bigger because there's more people to vie over the different area control spots. Mm. There are also other things you can do in the game that are going to get you victory points or income along the way. You can contribute to the kitchen and the... The both the kitchen. Oh, the both the kitchen. Yeah. The kitchen, and that will give you income every round based on other objectives that you're completing along the way. You can build a statue, which is going to give you victory points at the end of the game. Um, but I, one of the things that I really love is actually this lining one of your dresses up to have <laughs> the prime position at the fireworks, because if you um, pay this amount of dollars at the top of the board here, you get to place one of your tokens there to say, I've reserved this spot. And at the end of the game, I mentioned that the dresses are worth these victory points. Once the area control portion of the game is done, you'll be able to move that up and it will actually be worth um, two times the victory points in this case, up to three times for this more powerful position here. And really, the way that you're getting things done in this game is all about clever card hand management. So I haven't even spoken about cards mm -hmm. yet, but there are three types of cards that you will have in your hand, bronze, silver, and gold, and they relate to different activities that you can get done or actions that you can take throughout the game of Rococo. Um, more powerful actions require um, a gold card or perhaps a silver card and the bronze level of employees um, do more of the base level actions but each card is also associated with a bonus action and so you're using a particular color of card to get something done but then you're also activating a bonus which kind of extends your turn allows you to get more things done and along the way you can recruit new employees um, to add into your deck and the reason why it's hand, hand management is because once you've used um, a card, you only ever get to pull three out of your hand each round. And once you've used those cards, they get discarded to the side and you can't use them again until you've gone through your entire deck and then you can bring them back in and use them again. Um, the game comes with these handy player aids, which kind of act as a way of you know, marking a person's place around the board as a keeping the cards separate from left to right. It's kind of <laughs> handy as a bit of a barrier so you don't get your cards mixed up. But it also really clearly explains the rounds of the game and everything that everyone needs to get done. And for that reason, it is like a real pleasure to teach. Mm. I think because partly because of this beautiful um, player aid that Eno Tool has created um, and also the wonderful iconography that is quite easy to get to know. Um, but that's basically the crux of the game. At the end of the game, it, the person who has the most victory points wins the ball. Mm, which is one of the most exciting things. It is. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. So why don't we talk a bit about the things that we liked about well, the game? I'll talk a little bit about, about theme integration. Oh, yeah. Obviously, just from, from the little bit that you would have heard so far. It's it's a very fun theme. Whenever we've introduced, anyone that we've introduced this game to has been like, ooh, like it's they're so intrigued and so excited yeah. to be and fair we also have a lot of gay men in our life it's been mostly gay men who have been <laughs> no. incredibly excited not just I, gay men but it's, there's a, a lot of people well it's just yeah it's, it's easy to fun, get excited. yeah it doesn't yeah. really matter like yeah i think it, it's just a fun different theme um and so you like i think there's so many elements that work so well from a theme integration um it was it was paining me so to listen to your explanation of the different colors of cards because it's clearly their skill level. So it's it's not just colors. It's like it's the more advanced. Um, so you have like your gold, um, the kind of like your master tailors. Um, they're obviously the most skilled. So they're the ones that are going to be able to create the best uh, garments. And they're the ones that you're only going to allow the best to create the garments. Otherwise, your reputation is going to suffer mm -hmm. the gold color so the <laughs> yeah. i'm just going to trigger you <laughs> by calling i'm going to call everything real, oh, really basic no uh, and then yeah the same with the, the silver and then the bronze they're kind of like your your interns or like mm. your apprentice so they're great to do your errands so like you know go and collect uh silks and go and, and um you know help bring the money to to sponsor different spots you can't get the queen's favor with the bronze it has to be yeah, you know that's a, that's a turn order mechanic mm. um 
so I'm <laughs> explaining it mechanically here. Yeah. But when you have control of this uh, queen little token here, it means that next round you're going to go first. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I really love that because it, it adds another layer of deciding. It's not just like, oh, uh, you know, I'm deciding what action to. It's like you have to decide what, what employee to use to create, to actually play that action you are like the resource management makes sense the the decision of whether or not am i going to sell this for cash or am i going to mm -hmm. rent it out and you know be seen and, and all that sort of stuff all that makes sense the fireworks make sense that you the the better viewing spot you get then the more reputation he's like ooh, you know yeah. did you see that you know amy's uh, dress is sitting yeah. at you know oh, wow that's what she's wearing um probably the only thing that i only just clicked on as you were explaining and in, in it, that it is a, a um, what do you call it an area control is that I don't know how this would work if if your frocks are everywhere wouldn't that make them less less uh, exclusive or less unique or is it because mm -hmm. you know because everyone's sort of like wealthy and like it's like you have to make sure that you're wearing you know the i don't know I don't that's know. the she's, only she's that's really the, reaching for things yeah I'm, I'm reaching that's a question mark uh there um but yeah i think from from an integration point of view you definitely like i do feel like i am collecting the right yeah. silks and i am trying to like make the dresses and sponsor things to make sure that i'm everywhere i mean yeah. every hole in the in the ball. I have to say as well that I am not one for theme. I very rarely get caught up in the theme of a game. This game <laughs> to me feels very thematic, uh, which is a big call for me. Mm. But I actually feel like I am doing the things that, you know, if this was reskinned and it was something like completely arbitrary, it like or just boring, mm. I don't think I would get into this game as much as I have because I see the joy that it brings out in other people. Mm. As soon as you explain what you're yeah. doing, people are like, yeah, let's let's make some dresses, <laughs> let's go. And and I, I just find that that thrilling kind of, I don't know, it, it's fun to put yourselves in, in these different roles and, mm. and it is a really, um, really cool theme. I really yeah. like it. Yeah. In terms of like the way that we've experienced this game, um, Maggie's played it solo. We've played it at two players quite a bit. We've also played it at four players and we've played it at the full, full five player count. So we've been playing a lot of this game yeah. um, to inform this review and also because it's fun. And yeah, it's... It, is, it, is real, it is a real pleasure to teach. And there are a few games in our collection where when we have people come over who because of us have been introduced to games but aren't quite at that really heavy mm. level mm. yet. Um, this is one of those midweight games that is really easy to explain because of that thematic integration, because of the fact that on your turn you're just playing one card, allowing you to take one action and your bonus action. Mm. Um, it's very straightforward and people understand the area control part of the game yeah. uh, really well as well. Just majority is going to win in that mm. area and that creates a bit of tension. The scoring at the end of the game is really fun. <laughs> it's so good. It's really fun <clears throat> yeah. because you barely move off the zero point throughout the whole game. Yeah. It's not until the end game where you're like, okay, and then Amy had another two dress, and then Maggie had a three dress, and then you know someone it's like else a horse had a horse race. And it is, like, and you're just moving oh, them along. Oh, and yeah. we tend to really play that up when yeah. we're playing with other people. Like we just do one thing at a time. Mm. Everyone's like leapfrogging each other mm. and it is so tense because you get around this side of the board and it's so close and it's just, yeah. it's, it's really, really fun and everyone is like stressing out. It's interesting <laughs> as well because um, even though that part of the game is really tense, the mm. rest of the game, because because you can't see who's winning it's probably like it's not tense at all to play mm. when you're playing you're very much focused on how am i going to get the resources i need to create the dress you're kind of hoping i hope someone doesn't take the dress that i, I yeah. want to create next um or take that spot that i want to go in but it's not very it's not mean it's at not all the end of the world if no it it's like always gonna be other. yeah but area control games can be quite tense sometimes mm. i don't find this tense at all it feels very like nice and when someone's like oh i'm gonna make this dress off and, you know, our friends are like, ooh, that's a nice dress. Or, yeah. ooh, you know, are oh, you making lots of money with that dress? Like, it's kind of just fun yeah. and nice. And, and for that reason, it's just it's just a real pleasure to have on the table. Does the board need to be this big? Absolutely not. Mm. It does not need it's to be so a big. table hog. But 
it adds this gravitas to the game. It like mm. pulls you in. It's beautifully illustrated by um, Ian O'Toole. It's just absolutely stunning to have on the table. And for that reason, it just, to me, it just like doubles down on what it does well. Mm. And it just, yeah, it leaves such, it's, it's left quite an impression on me. When yeah. people come over, I want to teach them this. Yeah. So. I think it's, yeah, it's a, it, we've been exploring this from like, like who would we teach this to or who would we bring this out on the table to and it is a perfect um it's something that a heavy gamer will enjoy mm -hmm. but it's something that it it feels like a perfect introduction to the look and feel and motions of a bigger euro game that is not that like the barrier to entry is not that high so mm -hmm. you can teach it to a non-gamer uh, and they'll be able to kind of wrap their head around it not i wouldn't i wouldn't introduce it maybe like someone like to your mom for example who i think she would get into it hmm. but it's like i think because it does take a bit longer so it's like it's yeah. someone that's willing to like put in some time people um, who want to be yeah, get more into, into yeah. Who want to be yeah. more into gaming? Yeah, um, definitely. That's the kind of target. Yeah. I, I would also say that like the box is so beautiful that people yeah. see it and they're like, definitely, I want to play that game. And the components, One of our, like people are yeah, get excited the about the components and, and the metal coins is what if you have them, we yes, have them. Yes. Yeah, um, but you know. One of our friends was actually like, can we put the box on the table and have it like facing the game while mm. we play because it's just so beautiful. And yeah. I was like, that's so like, that's just so nice. And you don't hear that very often well, um, in board gaming that's world. That's ultimately trying to create, immerse yourself in that world. And yeah. it is a very big box. And these, um, <laughs> so these beautiful good, bags as well. Like backpack. everything just feels yes. very plush and nice. And yes. yes, it is expensive. In, in my opinion, it's worth mm. it because I also enjoyed the game because I think it'll get lots of table time. Yeah. Um, why don't you talk about the solo? Yeah, the solo. Yeah. Um, I actually haven't played the solo as many times as I would like. So sort of take this with a pinch of salt and the 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 critique or the the review. There is a an AI um, deck. So what's her name? Madame Dubari, I think uh, is is the name. And so the way that it works is just like with any AI she'll be taking her turns or you'll be assisting her in taking her turns and there's certain different obviously actions that you know she's going to be taking some of the resources is going to be blocking spots on the on the board and then you're both going to be having a score at the end and you're trying to obviously beat the score of the prestige um i found it i found it okay i tend to not love um ai as the as the the mechanic for a solo i i, I really love when games find a different way of of creating that solo experience. And, there, and that's a very personal thing just because I find that I get distracted and I lose track of what I was trying to do while I'm facilitating the AI turn. So that's not to say that it's a bad AI, it's just my personal preference. I found, and I've been trying to look into this, but I found that like I actually managed to beat her with not that much struggle mm -hmm. and i can't really seem to find a way of shifting the difficulty i don't know if i'm there's something that i'm missing um but yeah so that's my only concern so far is i don't know how like from a replayability point of view as a solo game how i would scale that up so if there's any um any suggestions or anything that I've missed, please like make sure to like add it in the comments. Because yeah, I'd be very keen to find out. Is it a game that you would pull out to play solo though? Probably not. I think and partly the reason for that is like there's a it's a big <laughs> it's yeah. a big sprawling thing. It is. And it's still so it's big and sprawling and there's a lot of things to kind of set up, but it's also relatively simple from a mechanics and puzzle mm -hmm. point of view. So I think I would either want to take out something that's smaller and quicker to set up to mm -hmm. play or something that's really heavy, really like layers and layers of complexity and like get lost in strategy. That's not to say that it's a bad solo. I just found that like, yeah, I haven't, I haven't, it, it feels like a fairly straightforward, mm -hmm. have a play, but I, I still don't see the replayability um, or yeah, that endless, yeah, again and again and again. Yeah, yeah and I definitely with multiplayer. And that's probably one of the other things, like what's your favorite player count for this? My favorite player count is four. Mm -hmm. um, Same. I would agree with that. Yeah, yeah, I think that as the player count gets greater, uh, we haven't played it at three, and I think I would no, really enjoy yeah. it at three yeah, because at true. three you're using this side, this same side of the board, but there's more competition. See, uh, I actually because... really like the other side better of the board. But so four would be then my yeah. But why? Because I it's think just because scale. It, there's, it is scale, but I I just feel I just I don't I, I think I just like having been able to see all the options and the and the points. So I think I would 
the compromises then it would go a little bit longer mm. when it's four that's, people. That's the thing I, I mm. don't like so much of the higher player count is it can drag a little bit and for a, a game that is like quite light and you're waiting for mm. you know it to come back in turn order yeah. for you to play. I did enjoy it at four, don't get me wrong. Yeah. Um, at five I felt like it was a bit a much. Bit it was slow, a little yeah. bit slow the game uh, especially we you know we're teaching new players as well mm. so that slowed it down but I, I just feel like, you know, when you and I played together or if yeah. there was one other person, it's, it's quite snappy. Mm. At four players, it was fine because we played with our heaviest gamer friends mm -hmm. and they were quite fast at the movement. What did you find at the two-player count? At the two-player count, I was surprised, actually. Mm -hmm. I was surprised at how well it did play at two it players. It did scale quite well at two, um, yeah. For me, it's a little, it lacks a little tension for, for Maggie and I because... Yeah because we are quite intensely competitive with each other and there are other games that bring that out more. In, in a two-player game, you're using this side of the board, there's a lot of options available mm. to you and it never really felt like Maggie was kind of blocking me out of what mm. I wanted to do. So yeah. um, for that reason, it was really nice to play. We got a great sense of the game playing mm -hmm. it at two. If you like that more laid back casual experience, this would definitely be a great game to get it to yeah. and also have that option to play it at higher player counts. Mm. Um, but yeah, I think I really enjoyed it at four yeah. with our friends who, who caught onto it really quickly. It was tensely competitive. Yeah. We were all kind of making jokes about the theme. It was like, it's really fun. There's one time as we were teaching, I pointed out uh, one of the, the orange silks and said, oh, yeah, that's good because they're quite rare. <laughs> and they are. And then they all and started loved, coming out of the back. Then, yeah, yeah, and there was one of those, like, all of the oranges started coming out. And then it was just this nonstop mocking uh, oh, me oh, of, that's like, so rare. it's so rare. I'm going to, so I thought in honor of the rare silks, um, I thought I'd wear uh, oranges, the, the rarest uh, of the colors. And um, a, a game about fashion, I thought I'd just wear black. <laughs> um, but anyway. Well, the, it is what most stylists wear, <laughs> just plain black. Yeah. I definitely want to talk about um, some of the kind of pitfalls of this game maybe mm -hmm. um, I and I'll you know say I, I really love this game there is no way it's leaving our shelf you're not gonna yeah, pry it out of my head in, like, <laughs> I love yeah. this game um, the, the couple of little things that I would say is that the replayability isn't is a real issue mm -hmm. um, I think that if it was just Maggie and I we would start to kind of this would we kind of move on from this pretty quickly mm. and if it's just us we will absolutely kind of turn to other games with more yeah. variability um the reason why it will stay in our collection is because the variability comes from introducing other players mm. to the game and it's um crunchy enough that we can get into the race um but it's you know it's newbie friendly enough that mm -hmm. we can teach it to them and they can have a good time with it yeah. and because they can't see if we're in the lead as well yeah exactly which we try not to do when we teach but yeah. um you know it, there's not that sense of like they're failing no. along, along the way which is really kind of nice mm. um the expansion that this comes with is the jewelry box expansion i really didn't enjoy that expansion i yeah, felt I like it so mainly it introduces jewelry that can be added to your dresses uh, when you create a dress you can add jewelry and it creates these like objectives that you can try and do to get different benefits i really felt like it was an expansion that kind of while I appreciate them trying to introduce more variability, to me it was just like a side objective it that distracted, mm -hmm. distracted from the core game. Yeah. And like, I don't think I would play with this. No, I so, agree. Um, so for me, that's like, okay. And then the other thing that comes in the box is there's these um, different dresses from all parts of the world. And that was really nice because mm -hmm. one thing I do want to comment on is um, it, it's nice to see different different ethnicities on like to see you know Japan represented and then mm. see the style of dress that they would wear like I really love being able to introduce that into the game there is a lot of diversity in the employee uh, in the employee cards I wish there was a bit more diversity in the actual people wearing the dresses mm -hmm. but there's there's not that many of them I think there's only four four yeah. different ones anyway so there's not that many of them but it would have been nice to see at least uh, you know maybe one more diverse character there's definitely diversity in the um musicians, musicians. Mm. um the, the only thing that really irks me and you know this is going to be such a personal thing but there is uh, some objectives that require you to pair up men and women and mm. uh Obviously, it would be really nice if there was also some that, um, you know, represented yeah, different types of people or even, strange. you know, it does. Like mm. if you and also there are um, maybe you could have some even if that means it's friendship between two men or two women um, or more. Um, <laughs> I, I like I'd like to see more of that in games um, because mm. it feels like 
if it, it's like it doesn't feel good when you like have to kind of lead into that heteronormative yeah. kind of objective yeah. anyway um but other than that i i really do appreciate what they've done with this game mm. i i really really enjoy it and our friends really enjoy it and a lot of that for me is like maggie when she plays she's not anti-social by any means but she's very <laughs> much into the multiplayer borderline anti-social She's very much into Proudly the multiplayer so. solitaire. Yeah. <laughs> She's an introvert. Yes. And I'm an extrovert. And when I play a game and when I'm assessing whether I enjoy a game, it has a lot to do with how other people are reacting to mm. the game. Like a lot. Mm. Um, not just my personal experience of it. In fact, I will kind of put up with a game that's like, okay, but then love it because of the joy that it brings out in other mm. people. And here I enjoy myself playing it and I get to see other people really like understand how fun board games can be mm. and yeah anyway i've said so much about how much i love this game <laughs> um yeah it's staying in our collection yeah definitely um but that's our review of rococo the deluxe edition if you liked this review please hit subscribe i don't know what youtube's doing at the moment people have been saying they haven't been seeing our videos please hit the notification bell if you yeah. want to know every time we upload a new video um Mention to us in the comments, have you played the old game? Have you played the new deluxe mm. edition? Are you interested in getting it? Love to hear from you. Is there uh, a way of scaling the solo? Mm. Like making it harder? or mm. yeah. Give me some tips to pass on to Maggie. Mm. Um, but otherwise, we'll be back with more reviews really soon. But otherwise, bye for now. Bye. bye.